morning, everybody. We invite you to stand with us and worship if you're able to. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly home. Praise Father, Son. short-term memory. I wish the only thing my eyes could see was the future burning bright right in front of me. But I can't stop looking back. I wish I was a perfect picture of somebody who's never not good enough. I try to measure up, but I mess it up. And I wish I wasn't like that. I wish I wasn't wishing anymore. I wish I could remember that nobody's keeping score. I'm tired of throwing pennies in the well. To do something, here goes nothing. It's day one of the rest of my life. It's day one of the best of my life. I'm marching on to the beat of a brand new drum. Yeah, here I come. The future has begun. Day one. Whatever well, single day. Your grace reminds me that my best days are not behind me Wherever my yesterday may find me, I don't have to stay there, no See my hourglass is upside down, my Sunday soon is here and now The clock is ticking and I'm so sick and tired of missing out I wish I wasn't wishing anymore, I wish I could remember that nobody's keeping score I'm tired of throwing pennies in the well Marching on 
on to the beat of a brand new drum. Yeah, here I come. The future has begun.
of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loud as praise teach me some melodious song sung by flaming tongues above praise his name I'm fixed upon it name of Good morning again. Yeah, there you are. Everybody have a good week. Oh, good. Okay, very good. We are going to read from Romans chapter 14, verses 6 through 12. I got a regular print Bible, and um, I think I regret that. They don't prepare you for this part of life well enough. Romans 14, 6 through 12. He who observes the day observes it to the Lord. And he who does not observe the day to the Lord, he does not observe it. He who eats, eats to the Lord, for he gives God thanks. And he who does not eat, To the Lord, he does not eat and gives God thanks. For none of us lives to himself, and no one dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, 
Whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and rose and lived again, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. But why do you judge your brother? Oh, why do you show contempt for your brother? For, he, for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, for it's written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then, each of us shall give account of himself to God. And chapter three. Uh, verse 13 says, Therefore, let us not judge one another anymore, but rather resolve this, not to put a stumbling block or a cause to fall in our brother's way. We touched on a little bit of this last week, specifically not judging somebody before we get to know them. When Nathaniel was judging Jesus, about where he was from. Um, he almost missed out on the goodness that Jesus brought him. But to go a little bit further, did you know that we could cause somebody else to stumble just by how we interact with them? We could cause somebody else to miss out on their salvation by how we interact with them as Christians. I see it all over social media especially right now. As Christians, we are a witness to Christ everywhere we go and everywhere we open our mouths. If we get caught up in the heat of the moment, we can say or do things that we could regret. We're also sending the wrong message to the world about what it means to love Jesus and to be loved by Jesus. I tell you, though, some of the most heated conversations I've seen are between Christians. We tend to disagree on a lot. Something that we need to learn how to do is segment primary issues, which are things that we have direct biblical direction on, and secondary issues which are also mentioned in the Bible, but they're, they're not as big of a concern as far as our salvation is concerned. Romans 14, 19 is a key verse. We didn't read that. It skips ahead a little bit. Romans 14, 19 says, Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. Paul also says in this chapter, meat eaters and vegetarians ought to get along. Clearly, it's a principle of agreeing to disagree over a non-essential issue. Here is an incomplete list that I found on some of the things that Christians have disagreed on over the decades. Movies interracial marriage, hairstyles, seeker services, po politics, smoking, borrowing money, fishing, sorry Matt, fishing on Sundays, <laughs> after church, right? Divorce and remarriage, women ushers, women pastors, Pipe organs, Rush Limbaugh, <laughs> men wearing beards, <laughs> the front row, <laughs> drinking wine, women wearing jewelry, seems pretty normal, raising children, how to raise your child, faith promise giving, dating standards, pledging, liberal churches, conservative churches. Christian psychology, the mode of baptism, do we sprinkle, do we dunk, worship style, timing of the rapture, will there actually be a rapture, school choice, the age of the earth, birth control, and politics. Very incomplete list, but that's quite a bit, right? 
Some of these issues are settled, others not so much. Some sound silly out of context, but at the time they were quite live issues. If you were a child of the 60s, beards were a sign of rebellion. I know you weren't a child of the 60s, but. An amazing thing happened over the last few days. It has to do with the inauguration of our new president. I'm not very traditionally political person. I listen, I research, and I, I pray, and I, I pay attention to world issues, but my hope is in Jesus. The kingdom's agenda is always at work, whether we think so or not. If you read through the Old Testament, every time a kingdom fell and was reborn, people thought God was not working, but clearly we know as we read it, he was. The rest of it will work itself out if we just pray about it. Maybe not how we expect or would like to see it, but it will. But this amazing thing I'm talking about wasn't the inauguration itself. Rather, it was about someone who attended the inauguration. Senator Bernie Sanders in his mittens, <laughs> in his coat. I had this shirt made by a friend of mine, Katie Moore, over the last couple days. I thought it would be funny, and I thought you all would get a kick out of it. Bernie's been quite a few places, though, over the last few days. He's been on a roller coaster. He's been with Indiana Jones. He's been on the Millennium Falcon with Han and Chewie. And he's been right here. We've seen so much heat and turmoil over the last little while that we're begging for some common ground. I don't care whether you like or you don't like Mr. Sanders. He was a unifying factor for us for just a minute over the last few days. For those who don't have social media or don't pay attention, that very meme that's on my shirt on the screen was going around everywhere. There are thousands of scenarios that Bernie has been in over the last few days. But even Bernie himself was getting a kick out of it. So with this issue, we're not right, left, independent for a moment. We were just humans who needed a break. If we can unite over a silly picture on the internet, why can we not find unity over the things that really matter? I've got a list this morning of some practical ways to love those that we disagree with. This list that I found, the list was compiled by Ray Pritchard. There are a lot of sayings that are often more true than we'd like to admit, like let's agree to disagree and quietly resent each other. Rather than us agree to disagree, why don't we, you just be quiet? <laughs> if by agree to disagree you mean let's continue to think each other is an idiot, then sure. Agreeing to disagree on the uh, Romans 14 sense means respect. How do you give grace for others to form their own convictions that are different from you without thinking they just don't get it? Number one, you're going to make up your own mind. The goal is peace. Romans 14.5 said, One person esteems one day above another. Another esteems every day alike. Let each be fully convinced in his own mind. 
The goal is for all of us to get along, not by all thinking alike, not merely tolerating others, but accepting and appreciating each other. Mutual respect, even though one votes Democrat and another votes Republican, somebody else might vote Independent. Peace with others starts by finding peace within our own hearts. You are the one person that you can never get away from. So make up your own mind. Only a confident person can truly accept others. I know what I believe about certain things, and I know what the Church of the Nazarene proclaims about certain things. So far, we align pretty well. But I'm also sensitive to the fact that it's, this is our do- denomination. That doesn't mean if you're Baptist, Lutheran, Presbyterian, Church of God, that you won't be with Jesus one of these days. As far as I know, we all believe the same thing, and that way to heaven is Jesus. It's in the secondary issues, mostly, that we agree, disagree. One of my best friends on the planet, Trent Lockhart, was just ordained as a minister with Wahiawa Christian Church near Honolulu, Hawaii. Trent and I went to school together a little bit in Hoopston, and we played a lot of music together. We get along. We have different political views, and we have different denominations, but we both love Jesus, and we both love each other. Whatever your issue, study it, consider alternatives, and form your own convictions that don't have to be somebody else's. Number two, live so that no one can criticize your decisions. 14.6, he who observes the day observes it to the Lord, and he who does not observe the day to the Lord, he does not observe it. He who eats, eats to the Lord, for he gives God thanks. He who does not eat to the Lord, he does not eat and gives God thanks. Living a truly Christian life is marked by humility, kindness, compassion, love for others, honesty, integrity, and hope in life's difficulties. Whatever your convictions, may your heart be a heart of thanksgiving and humility. I believe the Bible is the Word of God. It makes a daily and eternal difference in people's lives. But if you hit people over the head with the Bible, it's not going to absorb well. In fact, it's going to bounce off most of the time. How you conduct yourself is as important as the convictions of your heart. Is there anything worse than an obnoxious Christian? One person said it this way, live so that those who disagree with you look up to you as a model worth following. That's what I try to do. I'll say that again. Live so that those who disagree with you still look up to you as a model worth following. Number three, give others the right to form their own convictions. It's a follow-up. Romans 14, on to 7. For none of us lives to himself, and no one dies to himself. If you have the right to your opinion, your friend also has the right to their opinion. You can decide to listen to Bob Dylan, but he or she does not have to. To be clear, there are still issues that are not debatable. The words from 2 Corinthians 5.20, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God was pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf to be reconciled by God. We're compelled to persuade others to accept Jesus, because we know that that's the only way to salvation. But the style of worship, whether we do music like this, whether we do piano, whether we do pipe organs, whether we have no music at all, is a secondary issue. If you like the King James Version, that's amazing. 
Number four, refuse to criticize those who see things differently. 1410. But who do you, but why do you judge your brother? Oh, why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. If you're convinced that you're making the best decisions in the best of your understanding before God for the decisions of your life, and you give others the same grace to come to their own conclusions, abstain from criticizing them for it. There are different parenting styles, different thought patterns, long ways of doing something, short ways of doing something, different ways to say something, different tastes in entertainment. We were created with some level of diversity. If everyone acted the same, said the same thing, wore the same thing, it would get pretty boring pretty quickly. I would prefer not to wear what Julie is wearing this morning. Number five, focus on things that unite us, not divide us. Romans 14, 8. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are still the Lord's. Like our friend Bernie, he has some divisive qualities but he also has some uniting qualities. He's human, just like everybody here, everybody watching online. There's something in human nature that seems to divide us into little groups. The great unifying factor for the people of God is Jesus. This is what is important. Romans 14, 9. For to this end, Christ died and rose and lived again, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Jesus broke down the wall that separated us from God and from one another. In him, we're joined together in the body of Christ. Number six, enlarge your circle of friends. A lot of us are already doing that. Facebook is amazing. That's why I love it. It's a lot of turmoil. Social media is not perfect, but it's great for bringing people together. I have friends all over the world. When the Bible asks, why do you look down on your brother? The implication of that verse is respect your brothers and sisters in Christ. Admire them. If you are a vegetarian and all your friends are vegetarian, How stunned and small is your vision of the Christian life? Respect those who think differently about guns. It's good and healthy to have friends who truly like you, but don't see eye to eye with you on every single issue. Number seven. We're getting to the end, guys. There's only eight. Number seven. Get your own house in order so that you have nothing to fear when you stand before God. That's a pretty powerful one. Get your own house in order, so that you have nothing to fear when you stand before God. Bottom line, Romans 14, 11, and 12. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God, so, when, so then each of us shall give account to himself, to God. I can and should care about you, love you, pray for you, appreciate you, respect you, want the best for you. But God's design is that we are each, other, each ultimately responsible for our own decisions our own convictions and our own practices. So I can love you, but you're responsible for your thoughts and likes, and I'm responsible for my thoughts and likes. 
Are you ready to stand before God with an open book to your life and let him read your story? The bottom line is that it's between you and God. One last thing, if you hear nothing else, you may need this advice even before today ends. The next time you're tempted to criticize someone else before you utter a word, stop and pray for that person. Before you criticize, pray for them. Ask God to bless that person. Pray that God will guide them. If you pray first, you may end up saying nothing at all. Sometimes people say, miss no opportunity to keep your mouth shut. If you do say something, what you say will likely be changed because you prayed first. If we prayed more, we would talk less, and our words would have greater impact when we do talk. So, how do we love those who disagree with us? We make up our own minds. We live so that no one else can criticize our decisions. Give others the right to form their own convictions. Refuse to criticize those who think differently. Focus on the things that unite us instead of divide us. Enlarge our circle of friends purposely, including those who think differently. Get your house in order so that nothing, you have nothing to fear when you stand before God, and before you speak, pray. Father, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the opportunity to to deliver your messages every week. Thank you so much for the opportunity to love these people and be loved by these people. Every day is a journey, every week's a journey, and we're living that journey together, Lord. Everybody sitting in this room and everybody watching online, we're all here together. We all think differently, we all talk differently, we all look different. Father, I pray that you'll be in the middle of that and you'll find a way to unite us all. You are the common unifying factor. And we pray more people will recognize that. Use us, Lord, to be your hands and feet to show others who you are, the real you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The worship team has a couple more songs, I think. So as Adam shared with us, we are all uniquely created. We have different opinions, uh, different views, different ways that we do things. But there are still objective truths that never change, and one of those is how deep our Father loves us, each and every one of us. Oh, 
until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in it. Today I found myself after searching all these years, and the man that I saw wasn't at all who I thought he'd be. Well, I was lost when you found me here, and I was broken beyond repair. Then you song over me. It feels like I'm born again. It feels like I'm living for the very first time. For the very first a promise to me now, reassure my heart somehow, that the love that I feel is so much more real than anything. I have a feeling in my soul, and I pray that I'm not wrong. That the life I have now, it is only the beginning. It feels like I'm born again. It feels like I'm living for the very first time. For the very first time. For the very first time
very first time God's grace, love, and peace, you are dismissed.